Hello everyone, my name is Renato Jose Schmidt. I work at Lalaman at the technical service with the forage products. I've been with the company for about 11 years and I'm originally from Brazil. So I'm just gonna give some key points on silage making specifically for the feed yards. We think about the ensiling process and it's basically a method, an aerobic method of preserving the forage. So the, for the forage will be preserved by the low pH and also by the lack of oxygen. And we have to keep in mind that the quality of the forage that will be harvested is the starting point of the whole process. So we have to start with a high quality material. That means adequate state of maturity as well as the dry matter level. And we think about making silage and there are all these different steps that are equally important. There is no secret or golden rule. We have to pay attention to all details. So in addition of this initial material, we have to set the ideal chop length, bring this material as fast as possible to the silo, pack tight, make sure that everything is nicely done and safely, cover as soon as possible and seal everything. And after that, we should wait at least four to six weeks for a fairly stable product. In case of corn silage, then we can extend a little more to get on the start digestibility, if possible, around four months. The ensiling process, it can be divided on the initial fermentation, we call the front end, and also on the back end. So on the front end is when the conversion of simple sugars to organic acids happens. That's when we want to save the most of our dry matter and the nutrients. So this is one phase that's important to use an inoculant. Even though it's a naturally occurring process, we want to make sure that these beneficial microbes, the lactic acid bacteria, will dominate the process. And that's the type of fermentation we want to. We don't want the population of fungi, yeast and molds, or enterobacteria, or clostridia to be the main players. So ideally we want to just cross the pH to a level that they'll be inhibited. On the second part or second goal of silage making would be the back end. That means we want to have great storage and feed out characteristics. So a product that remains fresh for a longer period of time till the animal consumes it. And there is another type of additives for this so-called back end would be lactobacillus buchneri based inoculants. In this case, there is moderate, a moderate amount of acetic acid that's produced, which has a strong antifungal property. So during feed out, in addition to this extended shelf life by inoculation, we always have to be careful on the feed out rate as well as all the safety measures to avoid any accidents as well as avalanches. So in the end of the day, we pay attention to all these little details in order to end up with a high quality silage. Well, we think of the silage fermentation as uh, there's like an end point. So, you know, different on the fermentation that happens, for example, in the rumen, that there's always some product coming in and out. Silage, we want to have a stable end product. So if we happens, you know, we have to pick our battles if you must open like a couple of days after it's filled, you have to bear in mind that there's still a lot of changes happening. There's still a lot of simple sugars, not enough acid produced. We're not at the terminal pH yet. So ideally you try to monitor those changes along with the days of your feeding so you can adjust the, ra the ration properly. I think based on uh, the visits that I've been doing the past years to the feed yards, I think the most important is to keep the air out of the system because the air is the worst enemy of the silage. So it's just make sure you have a good packing job, a good final packing density on the silo. And also very important, and I see this unfortunately a lot, silos that are not covered. So we have to cover the silos. Even if they ask me, is it more important to cover the silo or to invest on an inoculant, I would say covering the silo is more important. 
we have to protect from the air as well as from elements, rain, dust, everything. I grew up on the farm back in Brazil. I had accident during silage making. I had to help my dad under a tractor that flipped over with him. So I think the problem is that we're there every day and sometimes we forget how dangerous it can be. So I think every day you have just to remind that it is a dangerous profession. And even though we've been doing that for many, many, many years and we think that we are safe, you know, always remember, always try to have like a distance to in case of silage if there is like an overhang or if the pile is too high, always have somebody with you in case of something bad happens. So just try to have these safety measurements so you're not gonna end up on an accident or even, you know, unfortunate case of death. I think one of the main goals when you talk to produce in the yards is, hey, I want to save more dry matter. And dry matter is really important. But we have to think that it's not just dry matter or just shrinkage. When we lose dry matter, we're gonna lose a lot more of the good nutrients. You know, the really good stuff like organic acids, the residual sugars, amino acids. So we're gonna end up with less material, we know, the losses, but also a material of a lower quality. In addition to that, you're gonna need more of acreage, more of an area that is gonna be produced because you have that reduced yield or because of the losses. So that's another thing, you're spending a lot of money just to grow that crop with seeds, fertilizer, you know, everything, even like the harvest. So when you think about retaining more dry matter, you know, it goes a little more beyond that. So think about the nutrients and the, all the other costs that are connected to that. From my experience, some of the main opportunities would be still s these basic management uh, actions. For example, the right stage of maturity, not much of a problem that I've seen, but the packing density can always be packing, packed a little better, so it's more dense, lower footprint, safer because it's gonna be a smaller pile or, or a silo. Um, also, covering is really important, and I always stress that fact, always cover. It's one of the least <laughs> liked jobs, but it has to be done. And when you start like fine tuning a little, specifically on corn silage, I see the silage is a little more you know, going on the dry side of the recommended range between 32 and 37, 38% of dry matter. So I see a lot of whole kernels. So I think this, there's like a lot of opportunity to get more of that starch from the kernel if the processing is done better on the kernels. And for further information, there are several websites available from different university or research institutions from the Forage Lab in Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin, from the University of Nebraska, and also from our educational website, that's qualitysilage.com.